Okay, right now we're being joined by um, the publisher, CEO of Christina Report and uh, former Chief Press Secretary to the River State Deputy Governor then, uh, His Excellency Engineer Tele Ikuru, uh, in the person of uh, Mr. Godswill Jumbo. Mr. Jumbo, good morning and welcome to the program. Yes, good morning. Plus TV, meeting you again. Ah, it's good to have you join us. Okay, um, tell us, bring us, uh, us to speed, up to speed rather, um, what is happening in Port Harcourt. From outside Port Harcourt, it seems as if there's a political fire that is raging and trying to ex uh, consume everybody in the wake of it. So give us an update of what is really happening in the government house as we speak. Okay, so uh, time, the timeline begins from 10 p.m. Sunday night. And uh, uh, that's when the fire incident happened in the uh, chambers of the River State House of Assembly. Uh, chairs, computers, furniture, equipment were damaged. And then uh, whatever uh, they were doing that night, uh, a lot of people, so we were alleged that they were trying to remove the majority leader that night. And then trouble started. So that was 10 p.m. And then by, by about 10, 30, 11, the Federal Fire Service stepped in, put out the fire. And then uh, the Commission of Police River State was also very proactive, quickly deployed his uh, personnel, heavily armed to secure, to assert uh, uh, authority over the complex and uh, hold down the place for to avoid further uh Wahala there and then by about 7 7 7 30 a.m and then we had the speaker of the house of assembly with 23 other members you know uh gather in the auditorium of the river state house of assembly and remove their colleague uh right honorable a edison as majority leader and then now move the motion which all of them agreed on to serve a notice of impeachment on the governor of River State, His Excellency Siminalai Fubara. And then they dispersed after that. And then uh, about an hour later, the governor himself had to, you know, uh, proceed to the place to check what happened. And before he left Government House, some youths had uh, converged at Government House, he had to address them. And uh, after addressing them, he now moved to the House of Assembly. On the way, we must have seen the viral videos where policemen were mm. uh, giving him a very warm bath that morning, <laughs> sprayed him with water cannons and all of that. But then he waded through it and uh, got to the assembly complex, checked the damages, and right there he said the place was not uh, fit for purpose. It was damaged and then as his chief security officer of the state, he has not approved any other venue for the House of Assembly to sit and declare that whatever was done there was null and void. And then he now proceeded back to Government House. By then, the youths from different parts of the state had converged from the streets of Potakot and then they escorted him back to Government House. Then, uh, about two, three hours later, we now see uh, Honorable A.J. Edison addressing the press that he has now been uh, elected the new speaker and that the other speaker, Martin Samewile, has been impeached alongside his deputy and uh, the other members who served the notice of impeachment of the governor have all been suspended and will face disciplinary panel or whatever and that he's promising reverse people he will hold the state together for the governor to operate and all of that and uh, he said himself and his colleagues uh, that was uh, at about 3 4 p.m thereabouts and uh, after that well some come started re returning around the city uh, more or less uh, somebody has been removed, and then the person who has been removed now remove another person. Somebody was impeached, then the person who was impeached now impeached another person. So it was a galop, a bazaar of uh, removals and impeachments. 
you know, all of that. So that's like what happened yeah. yesterday. Then let me also put it on record that no local government chairman was removed from office. The state executive council was also not dissolved. The, the new speaker and his colleagues only recommended the suspension of the chief, chief judge of the state, Justice uh, Simeon Amadi. Now, we also don't have an official statement from the government if that suspension has happened. We do not have it. So the, the things trending on social media are actually uh, more uh, speculative. Only the chief of staff and the CSO to the governor were removed from office. All other uh, dissolution, sack, and all of that are actually speculative. I, I spoke with the commissioner of police, sorry, the commissioner for information and communications, uh, Amogu Senebo, Joe Johnson, this morning, and he confirmed that no local government chairman was sacked and no state and school member was removed from office. So, so far, that's how far we've gone. So, and then the police, too, have like asserted authority across uh, those critical areas of the city, you know, to make sure that there is calm and uh, everywhere returns to normal. So that's where we are as at now. Okay. Uh, but that means you're confirming that the governor has endorsed the new speaker that has been elected when this problem started, right? Uh, yes, we can say that because uh, the, the governor on his uh, verified uh, uh, ex formerly Twitter handle has already congratulated the new speaker, so we can actually confirm that. Okay, so they, they speculations you say there are a lot of speculation, maybe this is speculation as well. But whatever is happening in the state has assembly or anywhere else uh, near government house, people are saying the target is the governor himself. The governor, someone somewhere wants to remove the governor. If this is true, what really is his crime? Okay, for that one, there is actually no speculation. You know, the, the, the things happening are clear. The governor is the godson of the FCT minister. The members of the House of Assembly, all 32 of them, are godsons, political godsons of the FCT minister. So when we see them acting against each other, and trying to impeach the governor it is clear what is happening you know we we, we are not speculating the the something must have given between the governor and his political godfather which is now leading to the the boys in the house of assembly trying to you know oust the governor uh, maybe the processes may be unwholesome but as per the agenda is clear then let me also put it on record that godfatherism is strange to governance in river states. It has not worked. Uh, Ojili came into government through Chief Rufus Ada George. The godfather factor did not work between them. Ojili produced Protimi and Meiji. The godfather factor did not work between them. In fact, when Amechi became governor, he set up the Truth and Reconciliation Commission and docked his political godfather, the man who made him everything he is in politics. He docked him and wanted him. The outrage was all over the states. You can't do that to your, to your political godfather, uh, but that happened. And then Amechi produced Wike. The Godfather factor still did not work because Wike came back, you know, with uh, federal power to fight Amechi, and even up to tomorrow, they are still engaged in a, a, a cat fight, foul fight, and, you know, all kind of uh, rascality that has turned River State upside down. And then now, if Wike is intending to be a Godfather to sin, it's clear too with the events of yesterday that that's not going to work. It's very clear. Sim is already asserting himself as the governor of the state. So, uh, so I need to uh, clarify that that for about four dispensations now, you know, uh, Godfather regime has not worked in River State. So we don't see it happening. So that's what is happening, and uh, people need to get that perspective. Yeah, I, I still am not clear what particularly. 
uh, they are accusing Seem of, you know, the governor of. Uh, what, because if you want to impeach someone, you will accuse him of something which is tangible enough that people will see and say he didn't do well in this or that. What are they saying uh, the governor did? Okay, uh, about that, there's actually nothing the governor has done so far. In fact, uh, yesterday, all the removals, impeachment, and the suspension, whatever, none of the victims, you know, the targeted victims, none of them were identified with any misdemeanor or any crime. The House of Assembly guys who serve a notice on of impeachment of the governor only alleged gross misconduct. How do you define gross misconduct? It's a vague term. It's an unwieldy term that is neither here nor there. The governor is just five years in office. What appropriations has he done? What expenditure has he done? Has he fought with anybody on the streets? Has he uh, maybe assaulted his wife at home? Did he abuse the FCT minister? What is his offense? You know, so when you don't have anything against the man, you now come up with that vague, you know, term of a, a gross misconduct. And there is that is actually floating in the air. As per the underlying factors, you know, we have the rumors which are unconfirmed, and I need to emphasize that that they are unconfirmed. There is the speculation that oh, that the the godfather has the godson to provide him two billion every month. Uh, we don't know if that is true, but we understand that for about uh, three months now, uh, two, three months, that that money has not been made available, and that is at the heart of all of this. And then there's another rumor that uh, there, is, there was this understanding that uh, the governor will run the administrative aspect of the government, while the, uh, his godfather will run the political aspect. So the governor cannot see anybody, cannot do anything without the approval of his godfather and all of that. And then somewhere along the line, something gave, especially with his visit to the Songhai farm. You know, the Songhai farm is the initiative of the Rotimi Amechi administration, you know, and that was a revenue earner, a very key revenue earner for the River State government, you know. So uh, Sim going to visit there and thinking of revamping the place. I think uh, many people suggest that that was the elastic limit, and then things fell apart, you know. So all of that is still speculation. There is no factuality to them. We are not there. We don't know what uh, father and son sat down and agreed on, uh, if they signed any documents, whatever. But these are speculations that are out there on the streets, you know. So that's it. So we. Look, we are spectators, we are observing, but as per what is in black and white, there is no offense so far that has been leveled against the governor that is valid. Uh, none, none, as at now, none, apart from gross misconduct. You know, I can actually look at you and say you have committed gross misconduct. Now, what is gross misconduct? <laughs> okay. Um Frivolous as it might sound, but um, is it the governor against the entire House of Assembly, or does he have some people who are loyal to him and not to the Godfather? Uh, well, we, we, as of now, it will be too early to say, but we know that eight members of the House of Assembly, you know, stayed away from the impeachment uh, drama. And we understand that those are the eight members who rallied around uh, the governor and uh, also, you know, uh, elected the, the former uh, deputy speaker and later majority leader of the House as the new speaker. So those eight are on the governor's side. If it is out of loyalty, we don't know. If it is out of patriotism, we don't know. But what we know is they are not part of the impeachment process. And we, we must also understand that the governor and those House of Assembly guys are like children playing in the same house, in the same family house. They are all children to the FCT minister. So if they are now going against each other, you know, we, we are trying to understand what's going on uh, between them and among them. So, but we know now that it's 
members uh, are not part of the plot to remove the governor from office. But whether they are doing that out of patriotism or out of loyalty to the governor is what uh, we cannot say for now. Okay, what about the relationship between the governor and his deputy governor? We've seen in other states that um, deputy and governor, they are the ones that are fighting. And then uh, somehow, uh, Speaker of the House of Assembly, is it in Ondo or so? I heard the Tiwa that we've been... Uh, okay, no, not the deputy governor, yeah. Deputy governor in Ondo state. So Edo state, Ondo state, and some other states, we see governor and their deputies fighting. So in River State, what's the relationship between the governor and his deputy? Uh, well, uh, one, I will say quickly that it is too early to say uh, because uh, these two persons have not been seen together like uh, any time recently. We don't know them to be together. We know uh, Professor Ngozi Odu was in the Odili administration as, uh, I think, a commissioner. And uh, was it? And then she's been around government for some time. But uh, seeing Fubara is like out of the blues. We just started hearing about him when he was uh, director of finance and accounts at the government house, and then later accountant general of uh, the states. You know, uh, so that relationship uh, is not like founded. It's not backgrounded. We don't have it, so we can't even begin to say if anything has fallen apart between them. But in the course of the election, you know, the, the campaigns and the election, they were all together. Whether that is a function of them following their leader is or as per personal relationship, we can't tell. But as as at now, in the middle of all of this, we have not seen the deputy governor act in any way against the governor. We've not seen her make any statement, we've not seen her hold any meeting, you know, and trying to circumvent the governor. We've not seen that happen. And uh, for those who know. Uh, Professor Ngozi Odo, you know, she doesn't appear to be that kind of person who undermines people, who, uh, you know, betrays people, who undercuts people. And we don't know how to be. She's a seasoned academic, you know. We, we know how far back at the Ignatius Ajuru University when it was COE and all of that. So she has a consolidated background of you know, uh, uh, responsibility, responsible conduct, uh, rectitude, and all of that. So what, you know, the political space in Nigeria has a way of messing up people. So, uh, but we've not seen that happen to her yet. Maybe in the days coming, as things unfold, we'll be able to know, but as at now, we don't see any fight, any rift uh, between uh, the governor and his deputy. Uh, but. If you ask me if Ngozi Odu is loyal to the FCT minister, uh, that's for sure because her uh, political renaissance, you know, is a function of uh, the FCT minister's effort when he became governor. He kind of brought back a lot of people who have become politically moribund, you know, brought them back into the political space, activated them with appointment opportunities and all of that. So uh, for that, um, I, I want to believe that her loyalty will be to him. But if that loyalty will or has, you know, made her to start fighting the governor, we don't know about that. We, don't, we have not seen anything uh, in that respect. Okay, uh, there's also speculation. We are, we're talking speculations, a lot of speculations today, mm -hmm. some of which you are confirming there are no longer speculations. Uh, some people feel that this is just uh, the first step to a lot of people cross carpeting as it were, to the APC instead of the PDP. You know, the, the, the governor and all the House of Assembly members won on the ticket of the PDP, right? And now the FCT minister seems to be loyal to APC more than PDP. That's the speculation. So uh, can you confirm or deny that these people may be breaking away from PDP and going into APC? Okay. Like you said, it's speculation. And uh, there is cause to believe that this whole movement from PDP to APC uh, may be actually at the core 
of this whole brohaha. Uh, some people are speculating that the, there was an instruction for the government and everybody to move over to the APC, and some people were like not comfortable with it. And you know, River State, you hear the, the saying that River State has always been PDP. Mm. PDP, not in the sense of actuality, uh, 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 really. It's in the, in the sense of like the bandwagon effect. You know, it has always been in power. And then there was that slight interregnum when Amici moved uh, every one of us in government then to the APC. And then you see that even my own boss, uh, my principal, you know, then had to move back to the PDP. And then recently, you also see the Commissioner for Transport then and a lot of other uh, political actors, even Amobu uh, Senegal, uh, Sam Sam Jaja, who like is at the core of the riverland agitation for governor and all of that, they had to now move to you know the PDP. So there is that gravitating effect around uh, PDP. But if it is at the core of this, it's still speculation. But for me, knowing the politicians we have in River State, how they lead their life, how they pursue their interests, I want to think that. For me, I think it's at the core of it. The, the thing is, this whole, most rivers people on the street, people think is a misadventure by the former governor. Even within his own inner caucus, people believe that the APC thing was a misadventure. They believe it's not something that aligns, that fits into the, the, the normal uh, political life of river states, you know. So now asking people to now move from where they have always been to APC and given the, the massive failure of the APC government since it came on board, you know, failing on all fronts, failing even by its own marketing scheme, economy, security, everything. You know, how do you now convince me to now move from where I am to that? And moreover, this is a party that has been abused severally, serially, maliciously in River State by the former governor, the FCT minister. So how do you now make it attractive to the same people that, you know, you are going, you are uh, leading on to abuse that same party? So I think... Maybe a lot of them are having a, you know, a, they are dragging their feet on this. Maybe that's why all of this is happening. Uh, or is it ultimately going to happen? I don't think so. In fact, they are receiving another side to it. You know, some of the people we have talked with, you know, at the background, they are saying that this whole reverse drama may even be an orchestration of the APC most level trying to undermine the FCT minister. Because if you look at there's a trend in reverse politics. When Odili, uh, uh, Dr. Peter Odili, wanted to go uh, for uh, presidential, uh, wanted to contest for president, while he was out there, you know, campaigning across the northwest, north central, north east, south, uh, east, south, uh, southwest. Back home here, you know, in the South South, and especially in River State, he lost, he lost that foundation, that political base. He lost it. The same thing happened to Amechi. In fact, uh, the FCT minister, you know, many people believe that well, not, not, uh, not founded actually, because these things, there is a lot of speculation within the political space, mm. but. People think that the whole thing about the fight was to undermine Amechi's, you know, capacity to be able to present himself for presidency. So he lost the base, and you must have heard the political rhetoric then in the course of the campaigns that if you cannot win your state, how can you win the, the, pres the presidential election? And even during this last uh, presidential election, you see the comparison being made that Obi won, Peter Obi won all of the Southeast. But Amechi didn't win anywhere in the South South. And then now you see uh, uh, Nesomike going to 
the federal again as a minister and some people are speculating that he wants to contest the 2027 election then you now see all of a sudden his own house his own structure collapsing in broad daylight so uh, 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 political watchers those who have looked at the trend in river state are believing that the whole idea is to undermine the foundation the political foundation the political base of you know the fct minister so that he doesn't even begin to prepare for 2027 and uh, from the analysis i've given you 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 want to see a correlation it happened to Dili, it happened to Ameji, and now it's happening to Wiki. So that's why some people are believing that this may even be uh, is like being orchestrated from the very top, you know, to make sure that he loses his structure in River State. And if you cannot deliver your state, you cannot deliver your constituency, then how can you deliver Nigeria? It's a valid uh, argument, right? Okay, well, uh, let's, let's just um, also take another thing that we've heard, that uh, Amechi is washing his hands clean to come back to the table of the PDP to dine. Can you confirm this? Because sometimes uh, when the election was going on, um, we heard that uh, while the, the, uh, the, the governor then was working for the present president now, for the APC, Amechi was secretly working for the PDP. Can you confirm this? Is he returning to PDP, or you don't see that happening soon? Okay, as far returning to the PDP, I already said that Rivers politicians gravitate towards PDP because actually that is like home for, if not 80, 90 percent of uh, Rivers uh, politicians. That's like home for them. So I wouldn't be surprised if we wake up one morning and then. Ameji is now in PDP. I won't be surprised. Why? Because the factors and the key players who drove him out of PDP are more or less either out of PDP now or silent. Hmm. You, you look at that. The key actors then who were fighting him, who were making it uncomfortable for him to function fully as the leader of the party being the governor of the state you know then they have now been relegated to political ob oblivion by the outgone uh, governor who is even his own boy he, he when uh, Wike lost it with his uh, initial political godfather senator john Mbata, who he single-handedly made him the obia chairman when they lost it whatever happened between them Amechi was the one who intervened, you know, and, you know, took him to uh, Odili and then they resolved all of that and then he had to go for second tenure. When the Amechi k team happened, Wike stepped in, mobilized Magnus Abi, uh, Dakuku beat aside all of them, you know, and then they fought until they got the uh, October 20, 25th, uh, 2007 judgment. And then upon uh, inauguration, uh, Amechi appointed him as his chief of staff. Amechi still recommended him to uh, President Jonathan to be appointed as a minister. Uh, President Jonathan confirmed this, uh, you know, when he came, when we came, invited him to come and commission the the bridge at uh, the Mpogo Bridge along the Mpogo Road that leads to NLNG roundabout in Portacourt. You know, so he said that he never knew a uh, week at all that it was a major that introduced him you know and uh, recommended him to be appointed as minister now you now see you, you now see the same wicked turning around to fight him and embarrass him and harass him and all of that you know over the years and then there is this cat fight between them you know when you look at uh, all of that you begin to wonder what's going on but uh, 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 now Wigan has found green pastures. Wigan has found green pastures in the APC. Though he's dragging his feet, you know, I think he's making his calculations, given the legal implications of, of moving and all that will follow. So he's dragging his feet, you know, and maybe he's also trying to see if he can move the whole of his machinery to the APC and all of that. So if 
if Amaji wants to cash in, I won't be surprised because those people that Wige was uh, allegedly fighting, they are now quiet. They are not there in the mainstream PDP anymore. And then, secondly, is Amaji has always wanted a riverine governor for River State. In fact, he, he felt that after his political godfather, uh, Peter Odili, you know, served out his tenure, and he also served out his tenure, the next dispensation should have gone either to the River Southeast or to River Rhine. But when the calculations were made, Amaji went for River Rhine. He said, River uh, Southeast, yes, you are still upland. River Rhine has not gotten at all. Why not wait? Let the dispensation go. And then he, he tried to project uh, the Kuku Peter side. That meant a brick wall. It was fought mercilessly. And then somehow, by the, by the workings of fate, now, seeing, uh, seeing Fubara from Obobo, you know, in the river, is now the governor. Is it something that Amechi will want to embrace? Yes, of course. So, that may also be, you know, a, a reason for Amechi wants, wanting to come back to the PDP. And then, thirdly, most of Amechi's henchmen are now in the PDP and they are stakeholders. So, coming back to where your boys are, wouldn't be out of place. So I, I, I wouldn't be surprised as a person if I see uh, tomorrow Amit is announcing on TV that he's now in the PDP. I won't be surprised. Mm. So even the speculation, I think it's a speculation founded on, you know, on, on the, on the opinions. Uh, a lot of things are going on as we speak. Uh, and uh, for River State, actually, the, the recent years have been very gruesome, very distressing for the political actors and stakeholders, you know, because of how the system was being run. So if now uh, they see this as an opportunity to rally around Siminala Ifubara to part him and his political uh, godfather, I, I, I think they won't hesitate. They will want to uh, crowd around him come back to the PDP crowd around him and provide him the support he needs to be able to stand up to uh, his political uh, godfather. That is, if he's still his political godfather after all of all that happened yesterday. Mm. Okay, uh, that's very interesting analysis you're giving to us. But there's a critical question that a lot of us have been asking from uh, the time of campaign till this moment. How is it that Wike is still a PDP member? In spite of all the things he has done against the PDP in River State, he is still a member. What is that card that he's holding over PDP of River State that he cannot be removed? Okay, it's not actually that he cannot be removed. No, there is nobody that is not dispensable. Nobody, not even yes of Wike that is not dispensable. Everybody is dispensable. Uh, but there are dynamics around this, mm. the political environment in river states. Now, let's try to look at uh, certain things. One, he has been the one bankrolling the party for, you know, several years. Now, we don't know under what processes you know, we don't know how that bank rolling happened. Whether they were done, you know, in compliance with public uh, public finance uh, rules of the country. We don't know. We don't know if they had to under undercut the processes to be able to do that uh, financing and all of that. We don't know. So what if the rules were not followed? What if the, the, the procurement laws of the country were not adhered to in, in the course of providing that support? You know, that can actually be, a, you know, a factor for blackmail. Uh, so if, if it moves now, it, it will be two ways. What will the PDP hold against him? What will he hold against the PDP? That is one. Then two. Do you, after the way he has advertised himself, you know, in the course of this whole uh, political uh, period, he has been in the public space, 
will he single singly only him now move to the APC. Uh, let's try to look at that. No local government chairman, no senators, no House of Rep members, no uh, party stalwarts, stakeholders, no governor, nobody else. Just him moving to uh, the APC. I mean, his value naturally will plummet. It will just dive, you know, dive down and all of that. So. We are thinking that that may also be another restraint. Try to get your house together and move everybody. Just the way Amechi, Amechi uh, uh, moved everybody in the government, SAs, PAs, commissioners, heads of NDAs, whoever, whoever, everybody moved from the PDB to the APC. I think that may be what he wants to you know, achieve before moving so you know and if you look at his body language a uh, wiki is somebody who likes drama who likes a uh, fiesta he likes it to happen big so I, I i am thinking that that may be what he's working on get the house together and move in a in a big way in a fun fair way uh, to the apc so that whole thing between him and uh, his boy uh, may, may be undermining that. And then, let's also look at something I said earlier. River State has always been PDP. We are, you know, the media people, we are spectators who have been watching the political space. You know, even what Amiji tried to do with the ABC, you can see that it, it is not sustainable. Over time, everybody started leaving him, going back to the same. And observe that they didn't go to any other party when they left APC. They left APC back to the PDP. Now, when you, you look at that, so I think that may also be a factor, you know, that is making it difficult for him to move. Then bring in the legal implications, you know, uh, if he's to move when he was governor, if he moves when he was governor, what will be the legal, legal implications to that? And then what about the political implication? If he moves, if he had moved then, especially after uh, Tinubu was declared the winner of the election, if he had moved then without ensuring that PDP won the election in River State, that would have been a challenge, you know? And then now that is out of office is now a minister if he moves what if some of his men don't follow him so i'm sure he's looking at all of that you know dynamics to be sure he has his acts you know together before moving uh, but I, as you can see with the analysis i'm giving you it's not a walk in the park it's not an, a feat you can achieve easily because river state is intensely pdp is intensely PDP. We are journalists, we can tell you that we've always been here. Every politician you know in River State, either they started from PDP and moved to somewhere else, or they moved from where they were and came to PDP, or they passed by PDP, or they stopped by PDP. <laughs> somehow, somehow, is that. It's so, PDP. so moving from PDP, I think, is a tall order for him. That's why he's not moving yet. Okay, let's just wrap it up with um, a word to the uh, uh, the rivers people talk to the rivers people because some people are, are really afraid of what this might turn out to be so speak to your people uh, how their mindset should be at this point and how you need to move on okay, for my brothers and sisters in the uh, river state i want to like ask them to emulate uh, bonnie lga my home lga bonnie island we we the, the way the politics is played in Boni is such that no matter what happens at the campaign ground at the election uh, for, for polling units at the collation centers wherever wherever there is this saying in Boni that at the end of the day we will all gather at Ikuba Nongo. Ikuba Nongo is where you, you hear the referred to as Ikuba Square is the gathering point of the Boni people is at the center of a, a Boni town where everybody converges 
And uh, if you follow the last uh, event, the 25th anniversary uh, celebration of the king, that was where the climax happened, the main event, you know. Now, that saying actually implies that no matter our differences, we should remember that we will meet in a particular place where we will identify ourselves to be one. Now, rivers people need to think in that direction. At the end of the day, we are all rivers people. Whether it's a Ngeni, Abua, Kahuda, Ekpeye, Ogba, eh, Imani, eh, Obolo, eh, Ndoni, eh, what again? Ikore, you know, all of that. We are one. And the, if you find, if you look at it, the river state is like a, a microcosm of Nigeria. I don't know any other state that has this high concentration of different ethnic groups. But see how we fuse together. Like, you know, in school, in work, we interact with each other. We, we, we understand ourselves. So we should not allow the political interest of one person, two persons, three persons, you know, to undermine that unity, that oneness, that identity of who we are. We should not allow it at all, at all. And then it is the responsibility of everybody in River State to ensure that governance in the state is protected. Okay. The politicians have played their cards right. from Upland now, they've landed at River Rhine, mm. you know, from uh, Ogba Ibem and Doni to uh, Ikore local government and then to Obiako and now to Opopo Nkoro local government. It is all of these governors are rivers people. Other judge was Okrika, Ojili was up by Egbe Mandoni, uh, Amechi was Ikwere, uh, Nyeson Wike is Obiakbo, now Sim okay. is from Okupe, you know. It, we are one, so we should not allow anything to undermine that. And in our quest for okay. protecting the governance of the state, we All should right. also not allow politicians to re-raid us into where we destroy yeah. what is you know, beneficial we, to we really, we really need to wrap it up at this time, sir. We really need to wrap it up here. Uh, we're so glad it was you that came to give us this uh, analysis on what is happening in River State. We do hope that, like you said, they will play the kind of politics that Bonnie plays. We will meet at that place you go and take um, uh, fisherman soup. Okay, so <laughs> thank you so much for being a part of our program uh, this morning, uh, Mr. Jumbo. Yes, I feel appreciated. Thank you very much. Yeah. So we've been talking with Mr. Godswill Jumbo, publisher, CEO of Christina Reports. And uh, we were talking about the political climate in River State. And we do hope that you had a great insight into that. This is where we're going to wrap it up on the show this morning. On behalf of the entire crew of Breakfast on Plus TV Africa, my name is Nyamgul Agaji. Thanking you for today and asking you to join us again tomorrow for another edition of the program. Up next is the news.